Next on Worcester News tonight, a good Samaritan with a gun confronts a would-be robber helping a woman being held at gunpoint. Plus, a possible new look for city streets. Could 3D intersections be the future for Worcester? Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. An armed man steps in to stop a would-be robber in Worcester. According to police, he helped a woman being held at gunpoint this weekend. The man does have a license to carry and pointed his own handgun at the suspect, now identified as 20-year-old Jamie Cintron. This happened at the corner of Seymour and Sterling Street Sunday evening. One man who lives nearby says he witnessed the whole thing. Coming down the street, down the other way, and I heard the noise go pop real loud. I knew it was a gunshot because I'm a veteran. And then I just seen the gentleman pick up the gun. I heard the scream. First I heard the scream, a, man, a guy scream. And then I seen him put the gun on top of the car. He put the gun on top of the car, and I asked him, was he all right? And he said he was okay. I just think he's a hero. That's all. I mean, you don't find very many people like that. And the man was able to get the gun away from Cintron, who later fled the scene. Police found him a short time later. Cintron is facing multiple charges, including assault with a dangerous weapon and unlawful carrying of a loaded firearm. Happening tonight, protesters will again make their case in an effort to save a historic church in Worcester. The Save Notre Dame Alliance plans to plead their case at tonight's city council meeting. They want to stop the demo demolition of the Notre Dame Day Canadian, which dates back to 1929. Hanover Insurance Group owns the property in the City Square project and say they've run out of op options for repurposing the church. According to a Worcester law firm, a pedestrian is killed in a traffic accident every two minutes and every eight minutes a pedestrian is injured. Personal injury attorney Peter Ventura is hoping to do something to change this and he says 3D crosswalks could be the way. Our Chandler Walsh joins us live now to explain. Chandler. Olivia, I'm here outside our studio and this space is about the length of what a crosswalk would be. It's a short walk, but it could be a dangerous one. Ventura says he hopes the 3D crosswalks could change that. Imagine driving up to an intersection on Main Street and seeing this. Kind of an optical illusion, a, a perception that, that there's, there's something there, there's an obstruction or something. Personal injury attorney Peter Ventura says 3D crosswalks painted on roads could be a solution to minimizing motor vehicle and pedestrian accidents. The status quo and what we've been doing for decades and decades and decades with these traditional white lines it's not really working as well as we'd like. The 3D crosswalks aim to slow cars approaching an intersection. And at busy intersections like this one at Plantation and Belmont Street, some pedestrians say it would be a good idea. A lot of times cars don't slow down right away. They'll keep going. It, sometimes it's hard, especially if with a stroller. I think it would help potential accidents and fatalities. We actually had one right up the street there recently. Ventura had an artist design what the crosswalks would look like on some of Worcester's most dangerous intersections. He says in 2015, there were dozens of intersection accidents on busy streets like Highland, Cambridge and Mill. And he says pedestrians are killed or injured too often. A lot of times what happens is the driver who hits somebody fundamentally says, I, you know, I didn't see them. 3D crosswalks aren't a new idea. In 2011, the Federal Highway Administration ruled they wouldn't be safer and would give pedestrians and motorists a false sense of security. But some in Worcester say the crosswalks might be worth a look if they get drivers to slow down. People flying through these intersections and anything that would slow them down would definitely be helpful. There are already 3D crosswalks in countries like China, India and, Ice, India and Iceland, which is where Ventura got the idea. He hasn't gone to city council or anyone from the city with the idea, but says he hopes at the very least it sparks a conversation. Olivia. All right, Chandler, thank you for that. A space at the end of Green and Harding Streets in Worcester will become commercial shops and residential housing. Local developer Alan Fletcher broke ground on the Kelly Square Marketplace Monday. He says the building will feature numerous food vendors, a diner on Kelly Square, and 48 market rate housing units. We have the most visible location in town. Uh, you know, people always look at Kelly Square as some massive liability and horror show. I see it as our biggest asset. 
And two different shops in the 138 Front Street complex did not want to go on camera, but tell Worcester News tonight they're concerned losing the parking will hurt their businesses. Fletcher acknowledges the risk of eliminating parking spots, but says the pros outweigh the cons. A real life opportunity for a local technical high school is allowing students to put their skills to the test. Pillars at Auburn High were crumbling when students from Bay Path High School came in to help. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us live now with the details. Roslyn. Olivia, it's students helping students and Auburn High School says it would have cost them five to ten times more if they hired a construction company. These brick light pillars at Auburn High School were starting to crumble. Principal Casey Hanfield says moisture was getting inside and they needed to be fixed at a reasonable cost. The building is 12 years old and we're in the process of doing some exterior kind of uh, improvements. Auburn contacted Bay Path Regional Vocational Technical High School, whose masonry department began work to fix the structures. About eight students from Bay Path started the project about a week and a half ago. It's a real world project that um, the students at Bay Path are actually doing right now, and it's something that they're going to be doing out in the real world. Students had to tear the entire structure down, inspect it, put in a new drainage system, and build it back up. Senior Sophia Burton says it's hard work, but she's glad to be helping other students in her community. We've been doing this for four years and actually to go on a job site, finally, it's pretty amazing. She says although she doesn't plan on going into masonry, she says the experience will help her in the long run. To learn the trade is actually very helpful with all sorts of matters. You can like fix up stuff. The project will cost Auburn High School about $2,500 which Hanfield says is a huge win for both sides. We get what we need. Um, the Bay Path kids get what they want, uh, which is out of their classroom and outside. And uh, at the end of it, we're going to have two beautiful um, uh, brick columns that should be there for a long, long time. Now, Bay Path has also done several other projects on schools throughout the community. They hope to be done with this project by Friday. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Worcester Polytechnic Institute has had a record year of patents for students and faculty inventions. Over the past year, WPI has been issued 16 patents and 42 students have filed for them. Monday, those students and faculty were recognized during the annual w WPI chapter of the National Academy of Inventors meeting. Commissioner of Patents for the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, Drew Hirschfield, was the keynote speaker. He says this achievement for the college is noteworthy. I appreciate that WPI spent such an effort, emphasis on not only getting the patent, but the licensing of the patent, and showing that, that, that not only is a patent valuable, but the re true value is how you use the patent and the benefit you can get from it. Lindsay Lozu graduated from WPI with her PhD in November. She has a patent pending on an invention which would decrease the number of infections caused by urinary catheters. She says she and her co-founder are paving the way for others. I think a lot of people didn't realize that we had these resources before. Um, and because we've been going through all these processes and you know, suddenly getting you know, more patents in addition to that, I think that a lot of other students are trying to follow suit. And it's a really good way to look at the research because WPI is all about theory and practice. So where is that practice coming in? And I think that that's kind of where we're trying to make an impact with our... Patent licenses were issued this year for technologies including lithium-ion battery recycling, a surgical robotic system, and shock-absorbing athletic shoes. While it's a popular week for a small town in central Massachusetts, the Brimfield Antique Flea Market is back, and with it comes thousands of people and business for the town. Our Brittany Schaefer spent the day exploring the market and has the story. It's a beautiful day for the first Brimfield Antique Flea Market of 2018. It's a week that brings a big economic boost for a town of under 4,000 people. It's a day longtime Brimfield resident Tim May has been waiting for. Yes, all winter long. May has owned and operated May's Parking on Route 20 for decades. He says the large crowds of the flea market transform the small town, and with the crowds comes economic growth. The economic impact from Brimfield in terms of revenue for the state of Massachusetts brings in in the neighborhood of between 24 and 30 million in tax revenue, um, sales tax, meals tax, rooms tax, tolls, 
And with an event of this size, Brimfield Police Chief Charles Cuz says they prepare weeks in advance. With the 25,000 people that are in town today, and this town only has 3,600 people throughout the remainder of the year, um, it makes for a very busy day. Jeff Seifer was among the thousands of people shopping Tuesday. He's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and plans on staying at the fair all week. Seifer says the 10-hour drive was well worth it. If you can't find it here, it, you probably can't find it. We're kind of looking for bigger pieces, apothecary chests, um, coffee table. We uh, said we pulled our camper, and so we have a truck, pickup truck, and so we got lots of room to load it up and take everything back home. Shoppers can find just about anything from antique clocks to clothing. One vendor in Quaker Acres is selling furniture from the late 1700s. And you can actually see the stripes where the where the hay was. We've been here for oh, over a decade and this is the place to be. The antique flea market runs through Sunday and will return in July and September, but Chief Haas says this fair in May is their busiest. In Brimfield, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight.